All right, so what I'm going to do is talk to you a little about creating your own icons. Uh, first thing is if you go to the eLearning Heroes community, you can see there's all sorts of free icons in there. A lot of them are saved as image files. Some of them are actually PowerPoint files that you can customize. We're going to work in PowerPoint. I'm going to show you how to create your own icon. So take advantage of all the free icons here, but let's go ahead and look at how to do our own icons in PowerPoint. So I'm going to go to PowerPoint. Now I have my own little file that I've used for a while. I'll clean it up and probably give it away. Um, but basically I can see the letters and then map um, icons to that. So in this particular case, I downloaded the Hey Dings icons. So I'm going to show you how we're going to convert these into characters or, or images that we can uh, use and manipulate. So first thing I want to point out is, and this is this is a feature here that we'll talk about that started with PowerPoint 2010. I'm working in PowerPoint 2013. Uh, 13 and 10 are a little bit different. Um, if I have two shapes, I'm going to insert one shape and we'll insert something that looks a little bit different. I've got two shapes here, right? Let's zoom in a little so we can see those. So we've got the two shapes. If I go into f select them both and I go to format, you'll see that I've got this merge shapes feature. Now in PowerPoint 2010, You'll have that except for fragment. You'll have these other four, uh, but you're going to have to add those to the ribbon. So all you have to do is right click, do customize ribbon, go to all commands, and then go to shape. And you're not going to find them in 2013 the same way, but you'll go to shape, outline, shape, combine. And then you just have to add those to your ribbons here. So um, you can go ahead and do some research on how to do that. In PowerPoint 2013, they added the feature here. So um, I normally use Union. Union allows me, as you can see, the shape two shapes become one, and I use Subtract. It's kind of like a scissor. So in Subtract, for example, this is my main image, and then the second image is what I call the cutter. So I'm going to select the second image, and then when I go to Subtract, it kind of cuts out or creates like a key um, inside of that shape. So I've got like a keyhole, uh, so to speak. So I usually use Union. Union creates one shape out of the ones that you have. Combine uh, it combines all the shapes, and where they overlap, it cuts them out. Fragment kind of creates separate shapes based on every place. So you got the separate isolated shapes, and then where they're uh, where they overlap, that becomes a shape as well. Intersect um, you only get where they intersect, and then subtract cuts out that second cutter image or shape from the first one. And what we're going to do is actually look at the fragment. Now in PowerPoint 2010, you don't get the fragment feature, so this isn't going to work. You need to have PowerPoint 2013 or higher. So what we're going to do here is use the same principle, but what we're going to do is we're going to use one of those wing, ding, ding, bat type fonts. Um, I actually have a font here, and um, you, I kind of have a guide so I can type in a letter, and then I just find out what font. I want to apply that to. We're going to use this F here, the capital F, and this is actually the Hey Dings font. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. So there's two ways you can do that. One is you can copy it the way I did if it's already a font, or you can uh, put in the capital letter F and then go to here and apply a font. So it works the same either way. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Uh, because it's a font, I can select it, and if I use the control, brackets I can increase the size. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now we're going to use that fragment feature. So I need two shapes uh, to start. A lot of people will insert a second shape and they'll do that. You don't really need to insert a second shape that way. I just take the shape on the letter or character I'm working on and just duplicate it. Select them both and then what I do is I go to format and we'll do fragment. And now you can see I will delete this. And what it did was it created two shapes. So it's no longer a font. Now they're two shapes. And I can right click. I can edit the points like I would any other shape. Uh, we're going to keep this. This is where you can start to customize it because they're just shapes. So you can add some fill. So let's say we want to make this look more like a regular manila folder here. We got this shape here. And let's make the top here a little darker, right? So um, yeah, I guess that works. So we've got that. Now let's say I want to create a piece of paper. So I'm going to add a piece of paper here. And um, let's make it look more papery. And we're just going to turn off the outline. We can go ahead and add 
Um, we'll just make it gray so we can see it. And we're going to drag it in here. And we've got our piece of paper. It's probably a little bit big for a piece of paper. Right now, this might not be um, how you want it to look. So, what we're going to do is go to Select Pane here. And we can just move that down here. So, now you can see I've got this. If we edit points, right, I can just drag that up here. And so, I've got a piece of paper. Well, that's probably not what I wanted to do because it's not exactly what I wanted. But let's say it's close enough. Um, so you got that, right? You can turn a little bit and you've got a piece of paper. Oops. You've got your piece of paper sticking out of the file folder. Let's turn it this way so we can see the tab. And there you go. So I've got a custom image and I can right group them. And I can save this, right click and then save as a picture. If you save it as a picture, let me zoom out a little here so you can see the transparency. So we're going to scale this up. If you save as picture, you want to save it as a PNG. Uh, what that's going to do, see where it's transparent here? Uh, that'll remain transparent. If you save it as a JPEG where it's transparent, it's going to become white. So just a, a bonus tip there. So you not only uh, can use those icon shapes. Let's go ahead and look. There's a lot of those face shapes as well. So let's see. I'm going to come over here. Select my, let me shut this down. Select my fonts. I'm, I've got this um, action or Tom Bats 4 font. So let's um, let's zoom in and see what we have here. So here's one, this face. I'm going to go Control C, paste it in here. Um, again, it's a font, right? So I can hit the bracket key to increase the size. Um, and it's just the font. So if I actually typed in here, so if I type in A, you can see B. Uh, you can see what I get with this font. But let's say I like this one. This is actually kind of a nice little cartoony character. I want to make this an avatar that I can use, right? So I'm going to go ahead and customize that. So let's do this. We're going to create two shapes. Uh, select them both. Let's go to Format. We're going to Fragment. Uh, you can see we've got this extra one. Just delete that. And uh, we're going to clean out the fragments. Now, one of the things with these fragments here um, is you're kind of limited. You're not always able to get everything perfect the way you want it. So, for example, it fragmented it, but when I drag this, you can see the glasses aren't separate. So basically, only this this part is separate. The rest is all part of an of that single shape. So there's a lot of limitations that I might get with that. But let's uh, Let's mess around with this a little bit. I like to use this uh, curved shape. So let's go ahead and add some skin tone to this. And I'm going to mess this up a little so you can see how easy it is to fix it when you're using the curved shape. I'm going to get rid of the outline. I'm going to fill this with a skin color-ish yellow, I guess. So let's make it more skin tony. All right. Uh, you can see if I send this to the back. I've got a skin tone here. Now you can see I didn't get it perfect. That's okay because I'm going to right click, edit points, and I can just drag that down. And this is what's nice about using that curve tool. I want to do the same thing with one of the eyes. So let's go ahead and use that. I'm just going to click, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to, we can fix that here. And we'll just do that. Let's get rid of the outline. Let's fill it with white. Now what I want to do is go to my selection pane. And I can just click and drag that down real quick. That actually worked out pretty well. So you can do the other eye. Um, now what's nice about this is if you're happy with this, you can go ahead and select it all. Control G, group it, and you can save this as a picture. So that's pretty much it. So there are a lot of neat things you can do with those icons. There's all sorts of icons. Shapes, uh, normal type of icons that you can use, and then create into vector shapes that you can use. Uh, characters, all sorts of arrows and things like that. So uh, take advantage of those things, bring them into PowerPoint, install them, and then uh, you can do this type of stuff and create your own icons and images that you can use in your e-learning courses.